Hello, I'm Darren again. The topic for today's video comes from questions asking, why do narcissists never seem to listen? These are fair questions to ask, given how they often seem to demonstrate poor listening skills. For instance, you might tell them no to something, they go ahead and do it anyway, and then afterwards behave as if they're confused. Uh, they might say something like, oh, I thought we had agreed. Or maybe you tell them something for perhaps the hundredth time, and they still act as if it's the first time they ever heard it. Well, to answer one aspect of that question is, at the very core of narcissism is a very weak and fragile, false sense of self. It's protected by often maladaptive defense mechanisms. They cannot accept anything that would challenge that false sense of themselves. A common characteristic of narcissism would be being very disagreeable. So there are times when they won't listen to reason or to facts. To be an error, for instance, or to be mistaken would be an attack on that sense of self and it must be resisted. They cannot be less than perfect, flawless. I think that's why they often use emotive arguments rather than factual ones. They dig their heels in, double down on whatever their point is, just to not be wrong. Another common trait is being highly resistant to any kind of criticism, even constructive criticism. An opposing point of view or a disagreement can bring up a vulnerability in them, so again they become very defensive. They reject anything that conflicts with their version of themselves. That being said, they can still listen though. For instance, in a work setting, they might listen to ideas from their colleagues, but criticize them, point out all of the obstacles, why it's such a bad idea and why it won't work. But they might take that idea, suggest it to senior management later on, or perhaps implement that idea themselves and then claim the credit. So they can listen. In fact, many narcissists do listen. They listen to their targets quite intently, but not quite in the way you think. In this video, I will be referring to malignant narcissism. That is someone with very strong, dark personality traits. So if you find it interesting, please consider subscribing to my channel. So the dark personality consists of very strong traits of narcissism, that's a sense of entitlement and being self-absorbed. But there are also traits of psychopathy, which is being callous and having a disregard for other people. There's Machiavellianism, which is being manipulative and duplicitous, and there are also sadistic qualities, and this is taking pleasure from the pain and the misery of others. They also have what's known as a dark empathy. Now, I have made videos on dark personality types and dark empathy previously, if you would like to check those out. But to illustrate the dark personality types, I'm going to use a movie analogy. And it's from the Terminator movie. Now, there's a guy sent back in time to protect the mother of the guy that's going to save them all in the future. And he's trying to explain to the girl the nature of the Terminator. He tells her it is a machine. It only has one program. It doesn't feel pity, guilt, or remorse. You can't reason with it. You can't plead with it. You can't bargain with it. It only has one program, and it will not stop until it completes that program. But the thing about the Terminator machine is, it's a learning machine. It learns different tactics and strategies, but only to get it what it wants. It learns phrases, social norms, and how to mimic emotions. And it does this by watching and by listening. Now, I know that sounds a bit dramatic, and what's that got to do with narcissism and the dark personality? Well, they watch and listen in order to learn how to behave with others, how to be sad, how to be upset, how to contain themselves in public and only act out in the privacy of their own homes, or only to be toxic and malignant when others aren't watching. It's only those closest to them that get to see the real them. Now, when it comes to listening, in the early stages of a relationship with a narcissist, they will listen a lot to their new partner. They want to know all about them. They listen so that they can mirror them. They listen with intent. And listening also makes them seem attractive. People like to be heard, they like to be listened to, they like to feel valued and understood. So listening is actually part of the seduction process. They listen to learn all about their partner's positive qualities, the things other people admire in them. Uh, they integrate these often into their own persona at a later date with other people. They also listen to find out about the partner's strengths, their qualities. 
so they know what to dismantle and devalue at a later date in order to make them more controllable. They listen to find out about friends and family so that they can either take over, make them their friends, or to find out who to isolate them from. They listen to the partner's fears, regrets, their secrets, so that they can exploit these at a later date in order to hurt and shame. They also listen to find out what the new partner likes, what they want, what they need, so that they know what to withhold, as well as what to give, in order to create a trauma bond, and this is through a process of both positive and negative reinforcement. They also listen to learn how to mimic empathy, compassion, and common decency whenever it's needed. Now after a long time in a relationship with someone like that, it does seem as if they've stopped listening. Again, they keep doing the same things over and over again, no matter what the partner does or says. It seems like they're not listening, but as I said earlier, they are listening. It's just not in the way that you would expect. They don't necessarily listen to what's being said, rather they listen to how it's being said. They listen for the emotion. They want to know the emotional impact they're having on their victims, whether that's positive or negative, because they feed off it. They feed off the pleasure and excitement and gratitude they generate whenever they flatter or they can surprise, but they also feed off the negative emotional energy they create. They feed off the hurt and the devaluing they cause whenever they make their partners jealous with their flirtatious behaviour. They're watching, they're listening, and they're learning. They want to know if their manipulation or their provocation works. And as much as it can be a defense mechanism to avoid accountability, they also feed off the confusion they create with their nonsensical reasoning. They feed off the frustration they create by doing the same things over and over again and pretending they don't know what the issue is. But even when they're pretending they're confused, they are still listening. They listen for any kind of flaw in their partner's arguments or opinions, anything they can use to exploit or cause further contention, frustration or drama. Hear things like, that's not what you said a moment ago, or that's not what you said 10 years ago. And this would be a form of gaslighting. They also watch and listen for their partner's reactions to them being mistreated, to being lied to, cheated on, and they use that as the focus of the discussion, not what they did to cause it. This is often referred to as reactive abuse. They also have to listen in order to be able to deflect. They listen for a key word or a phrase within a sentence, then take that out of context, build a straw man argument against it, and then watch and listen as the partner has to defend themselves against something they never said or meant in the first place. In some cases, they don't just want the partner to give them what they want to comply. They are paying attention to how the partner does it. Are they complying from a position of frustration, embarrassment, defeat, or worship? And when the relationship ends, just like the Terminator machine, they have learned new phrases to use, new skills to manipulate. They have learned how to be the victim, how to vilify their ex, as they recruit others to support them and restrict their ex-partner's support network. They also have new skills to try on their new target, but they are still feeding off the distress of their ex-partner. And lastly, if you ever want proof that they are listening, the next time you're in an argument with a malignant narcissist, pay attention. That conversation might be going nowhere. It might be going round in circles. You might find yourself becoming more and more frustrated. But pay attention because you just might catch, for a moment, even just a split second, you just might catch a glimmer of excitement in their eyes. You might even see them beginning to smirk. And there's your proof because they have been listening and they are feeling very powerful at that moment, powerful because of the control they believe they have over your emotions. And if that smirk infuriates, humiliates, devalues or insults, just remember, that's feeding them as well. So there's a brief outline of narcissists and listening. Now, as always, there's many things I could have added. Please feel free to use the comment box below. There are some interesting conversations start around these videos. But if you find this video interesting or helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. And until next time, thanks for watching.